All right, so welcome to this uh, other lesson. This is kind of after the first uh, lesson, lesson two, as one might say. Uh, so we're going to uh, do a few things here that's going to be a play off of the first lesson. Um, this one we're going to talk about layering shapes, cutting with uh, the shape builder, um, layering references. Um, like I think we had done, yeah, we had done in the first one, opacity. Um, and so we're going to make the uh, fisherman character. So this may be a long video. I'm going to go through uh, the whole thing of uh, making the fisherman and uh, I'll, I'll show you how to make it. So you can stop if you get the, if you get the idea. You don't have to go through the whole thing. Um, but the main thing is to understand looking at an image, deciding what goes in front of it, what goes behind it, uh, and knowing also that you can move it around if it's in the wrong spot. And also a very important thing that we're going to talk about is grouping. So making it easier to understand what's inside of your scene uh, by grouping things and by naming them. So don't under underestimate the, the importance of that kind of organization. Uh, you have to get a little bit uh, finicky when it comes to, uh, to making a really big uh, image because things can really get like a lot of layers. I have, I have one drawing uh, illustration I did of uh, Captain Kirk from the original series um, that I'll put right over there. I point in the right direction. Uh, and uh, it should, uh, uh, it has a, a lot of layers in it. And all right, so let's start by making a new file. We're going to do the 13 by 8 uh, again, inches, and just go to create. And before I start, I'm going to show a few little things uh, that you should know uh, before we start doing it. Um, one is remember uh, fill, and there's our stroke color. Remember to go into your uh, in the workspace, go to Central's Classic, and when you bring up the transparency, you'll go to transparency, uh, and it'll pull it out of uh, this this little ribbon thing here, and just drag it over here and put it on top, so that so that it feels a little bit more like Photoshop, and put your layers down here, and uh, that's the way that we're going to start it. So we. Uh, I think we made one shape in the uh, in the first one. I want to show you the easiest heart ever uh, to make. And uh, some people may have tried it, and you're like, "It's just a freaking heart! How hard could it be?" And at one time, I thought that too. Um, we have um, shapes. If we click over here, we have a bunch of different shapes. We have ellipse tool, polygon tool, star tool, etc. So if we do just a rectangle, and remember, if you hold down Alt when you're making a shape. Uh, you can have it go from a center point, just like so. If you hold down Shift, uh, you can keep the same uh, ratio, so it's a square. But if you hold down Alt and Shift together, it's the same ratio and you're pulling it from the middle, so that's very handy. Uh, then what we'll do, we'll press V for our very beginning or the selection tool. I always forget what the actual name of it is because I use the very beginning and anchor uh, Phone, um, uh, mnemonic and then we're gonna click and rotate this then I'm gonna hold down shift so that we can get it at a 45 degree angle then I'm gonna press P for the pen tool and uh, I'm not adding a point here but I am holding down alt and we get that little uh, what looks like a phone uh, icon I click and hold and I'm starting to move it and now I hold down shift and you'll see our anchors are uh, um, are going are parallel. So I'm just gonna bring it up to right about over there and let go. I'm gonna do the same thing over here. Now hold down Shift, and now you can see it's gonna snap over there a little bit. And then I let go, and there's our heart tool. Not the best heart, but uh, it certainly is a super easy heart to make. Um, other things uh, that um, I wanted to show before we get into the little uh, fisherman uh, is uh, the polygon tool. So the polygon tool, you can make all kinds of nifty stuff. You don't have to go and try to make it yourself. Uh, we'll hold down Alt and Shift, and we'll, um, we'll make this tool here. We'll lift up on Alt and Shift, but I still have my mouse button held down. And then I go like this, up and down keys. Now that's crazy. Look at that. 
So I can add these guys. I can add as many polygons as I want. And um, I can rotate these guys around so it still thinks it's going along in one, um, one angle. I think if I hold down Shift, yeah, then it will um, it'll keep that uh, bottom part of it uh, stationary. And I can create larger and larger shapes. So that's how you make uh, accurate um, uh, shapes or polygonal shapes. I think the same thing works with the star tool. So if I go here and I make a star there, you don't have to go and make your own star. Hold down shift uh, and you can get the same ratio like that. But if I still have my um, mouse button held down, I can increase the size of the star. I can get a lot uh, of stars there or I can get very few. I always forget what this guy does. Flare tool, not sure what it does. Oh, okay, wow, that's amazing. I'm just blown away by this tool. And slash sarcasm. Delete. All right, so another thing um, that we're going to work on is, uh, is the shape builder. Um, so there's, uh, the shape builder can do a lot of really neat stuff uh, say uh, we take a shape, we'll take an ellipse. A lot of stuff can be done with an ellipse. Um, let's get rid of the inside uh, of that. And let's see if I can do this little exercise. So I've done three little ellipses right there. And I'm going to move this right about over here. So I have three of those uh, shapes there. If I go into our shape builder, oh, we can't do that yet. We need to select all of them first. The shape builder only works with uh, shapes that you have currently uh, selected. So if you're inside of an object, uh, you'll see a plus sign uh, where you can add uh, stuff to it. Say you want to do a, a little um, a dialogue bubble, you know, from like cartoons or something. Um, now I want to add all these guys together, so watch what happens. I have the plus sign, I click and hold, and I'm just drawing from one shape to the next, and I go down like that. And now it's added those guys together. I hold down, uh, hold down Alt, and then I just draw over these guys, and I remove it. And now we have our little dialogue button, or a dialogue uh, bubble. So super, super, super fast. You can do stuff like that with this too these guys not that it's going to make as useful an uh, object as that relatively um, and uh, I want to cut out these guys oh, I'm adding to it I just hold down alt and then I've cut those guys out of the heart so weird shape but uh, the process of making it uh, is uh, is interesting so let's delete those guys Let's get into the fisherman character. <coughs> right. I made an updated fisherman character, so he's a little bit more detailed. And just drag him into the scene. I'm going to hold down shift while I move him around. move him in the middle there and with him in the middle I'm just going to change the size of the artboard so it's just all around him all right and then with him in the right spot I'm going to create a new layer but I want this layer to be underneath our reference layer and then I lock him. No, I'm not going to lock him yet because I want to start making stuff. Let's instead uh, click on the target on that layer and then with transparency over this, we can bring it down. Let's bring it down to 50. And now I lock him. Now we're not going to have any issues with, uh, uh, with selecting that layer. 
All right, so this is where you have to have a plan, um, and you make up the plan as you're going along. Um, uh, in this case, uh, we want to know what things are going to be on top of the other. So uh, the hat is going to be on top of everything. Uh, the neck is going to be behind everything. Uh, this ear uh, can be in front of the back hair, uh, but behind this beard. The nose will be in front of the mustache. The little mouth will be behind the mustache. Um, the mustache has to see through, uh, go over the beard, so that will be on top of the beard. So we kind of know already uh, how it's going to go together. So let's start with the hat. So we click on the target layer for where we're going to draw. Click on that. And let's, um, you can also choose some, uh, you can select a color. The colors are going to be a little light on this because uh, it's 50%, uh, but uh, let's not worry about that so much. We can obviously change that later. Uh, so our fill color, since uh, all of this, by the way, is not going to have a stroke. So make sure you have no stroke on your shapes. So to do this, um, we can click on this little swap, fill, and stroke. And we click on that, and we move them, uh, flip them around. Make sure our fill is active. And then let's go to the eyedropper, and let's choose a color there. That one's a little bit uh, too, not very saturated. I'm going to click to the HSB so that I can um, saturate it just a little bit more. And we'll make it, yeah, that looks, that looks good to start. We don't have to obsess about it. Then we go into our pen tool. Now we're going to start drawing the hat. So the first thing that's going to be drawn uh, is our, our hat. Clicking once. Notice I'm going underneath uh, that little part. going to hold down Alt and click on this anchor and make it a hard anchor. I don't know what they're supposed to be called, but that's what I'm going to call them. And I'm rolling with it. And I click Alt down and click and hold. And there's our hat. So now we want to add all the little details on top of it. The first thing I'll start with is uh, the um, there's a little bit of a brim that you can see underneath this, and that's a little bit lighter. So this is where the fun comes in with a shape builder. Let's make that a little bit lighter. Oh, no, we don't want that because we're changing the actual object. Uh, so I deselect the object. I double click on our color. I make it a little bit lighter. Go over there. Go to our pen tool. Now when we're doing something like this, um, there's a couple things that you can do. You can click on the anchor as a starting point. That's one way of doing this. I'm going to click on that anchor with Alt. Click on that anchor there. Now I'm going to go inside of the hat, but it doesn't really matter what I do uh, with this because it's going to be underneath. So I could do whatever I wanted over here, and you're just never going to see it. Um, that's the fun part of that. And then I'm going to close it, just like that. So there's our object. So if we look at it, we can say, hey, you weren't supposed to see that. Um, so what we do is we click on this object uh, and target it. And then we put it underneath that. And now if we go like this, you can't see it. Periodically, you might want to uh, hide your reference object so you can marvel at the, uh, the shape uh, or the design that you've done. And there we go. And since this is a cartoon, uh, we don't have to worry about too much exactitude. But the exactitude that we want is that we don't want any white spaces between the layers. So we want the layers to be, you know, just a really nice, clean cutout. So let's uh, choose a target that we're going to go over. Click on that. And now let's start uh, making some other stuff. Uh, let's make this little... Um, whatever this is called, this little doodad in front of it. And let's click on the color. 
Let's give that a, a darker brown color. You can use swatches for this. It's very handy. Uh, I don't find that uh, there aren't quite a lot of colors and swatches that we can use in there, so I'm just messing with the colors over here. Uh, so we'll start with here. here. Making this rounded. Making that rounded. Alt click there. Click there. click over here and we're done turn off our reference layer there's our nice little brim all right now let's make this little tiny pocket up here so if we look at the uh, the image and notice we also have the hat image in one layer we can turn off that hat and we can look at our reference image so it doesn't it looks like there might be a shadow underneath it if there isn't a shadow whatever um, you know we can add a shadow. Uh, you'd be amazed at how much uh, detail um, uh, of feeling that that uh, shadow can really bring to uh, to an illustration. Double click on the uh, on our color, and we'll bring that up a little bit. Lower the saturation a little, and let's make the bottom part because it's going to be underneath. So click here, click here. And I'm going to uh, give a little bit of a curve to that. Click on the anchor. A little curve. Click on the anchor. And there's a little guy there. And so there's the underside of the pocket. Let's make the little lid that goes to it. And this one we're going to make a little bit lighter. Make it lighter. We want this to be a little bit lighter than the back hat color. And I'll also show you how you can uh, globally replace uh, and adjust uh, colors so that you're not going around and just changing every single color individually. That's a very handy thing that you can use for different treatments. If somebody says, I don't like that color scheme, you can uh, change it on the fly and say, you like this one? Hopefully not in that tone of voice though. Click on that and click that anchor. Click over here. Click there. So notice I'm reusing some of these anchors uh, that are behind it. So we have that going. And let's give a uh, let's give a little shadow underneath there. So we could add this shadow um, in a different way. Um, instead of redoing a new one, I could take this uh, little pocket and I can hold down Alt and you see the little icon that has two little uh, arrows on it? Uh, it's going to duplicate that. So now I could bring this uh, down a little bit and now we have two different uh, shapes. They're the same color but only one is selected. So now I can make this one a little bit darker to saturation and let's select both of these shapes here and this shape as well so now we see three shapes uh, so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna cut out the areas that we don't need so that we can have a little bit of a shadow of this pocket so this is a good example of the of how we're gonna use shape builder in this uh, with this character so I go to the shape builder and I'm going to cut out the parts that we don't need. So Alt uh, is the minus. So I get rid of that one. I get rid of that one. And then I don't really need to deal with anything else because I'm just going to layer it on top of itself. Let's see if I'm correct about that. There we go. Now if we hide our reference, there's a little Look at our little pocket. Isn't that adorable? I'm incredulous. Okay. <clears throat> so now you'll also notice that we have some uh, other little shadows. So uh, 
this is uh, kind of an amalgam of, uh, of two images of the, of the uh, fishermen. Um, you can see that these, there's different colors here uh, for the shadows, but uh, you have to understand that uh, this isn't necessarily uh, three, a bunch of different shapes. It's this color going along here, this color here, and then, um, and then there's one shape on top of it that's transparent that's making these other shapes um, appear. So let's uh, add the shadow um, underneath this brim over here. So I go to the pen tool, and I'm just going to draw inside of it. Move that down holding uh, control. And click over here, and that's one of them. And then I'm going to add the other one over here. So these are going to be cut. And now that we have these guys on here, we're going to um, add some transparency. You probably hear my son in the background. It's all right, he's having fun playing with uh, uh, a calendar, making up stories. All right. So let's change the transparency on this layer. We have two layers, they're both targeted. And let's lower the transparency so that uh, it will just change the color. So if we look at that, that's what it looks like underneath. And then we're going to go in, select this, select this, and select these three shapes. We're going to use the shape builder. Nope, we need one more. That one. We'll select the shape builder, and we're going to cut these and cut this one. Now we have our shadows, and then this shape and this shape, both of these guys, we're going to put underneath this brim. So I think our brim is right there, put that under there, and then hide our uh, reference, and now we have two little shadows. And then we also have another shadow that's going over everything, except for the pocket, I think. Uh, and what this is, is, uh, is uh, actually, it's not, I don't think it's a shadow, I think it's a highlight. So we could do that even uh, differently. And uh, this, is, this will be fun because this will show you like the opposite of a shadow. So in general, like if you're painting something, say actually you're painting something in Photoshop, um, and I learned this when we were uh, in uh, doing character um, modeling at EA. Um, uh, everybody had uh, a lot of painting skills, but I hadn't painted yet. Um, so they, <coughs> or rather I hadn't done any oil painting or acrylic painting. Um, <coughs> so they used, uh, they had the, they said everything is basically a color with a shadow and a highlight. Uh, so that's also like a, a style called grisaille, which uh, is basically an outline color, um, a, uh, an inked color, and then a highlight um, or like a charcoal kind of, uh, uh, a chalk color, which is the highlight. So for this, we're going to add a highlight, and this should be fun. So let's make the shape first. And notice I'm drawing into his actual his face. And there we go. So with this, we're going to change this to a white color. Let's change it to just very white, very, very white. So it's a white color, and then let's uh, move the opacity down so that it's a nice highlight color. We need some highlight. 
we'll go to 30. And let's look at it without the reference. So that looks pretty good. Uh, but since we still have the this stuff outside, we want to get rid of that, um, these extra shapes. So to do this, we're going to select our uh, highlight, then we're going to shift select onto the hat, and then we're going to go to the shape builder. And we're going to cut that, and we're going to cut that. And now we have our highlight color. Look at that! It's not great! It looks so illustratorly. Uh, so nice and organized and clean. All right, so that's our first um, part to it. And what we'll do is uh, we'll uh, collapse that, double click on that layer, and just call it hat. Create a new layer. And let's put this layer underneath this layer. Let's save our, um, our, uh, our project. And we're going to call it fisherman example or fisherman underscore one. Remember, very good to uh, save frequently. So there's our uh, our hat. So the hat is relatively easy uh, compared to the rest of the, of the character. We'll go on to um, the rest of it. Let's actually lock our hat, and that way we won't uh, modify it. So the rest of the guy, let's start with some things that are very obvious. Let's do pen tool and let's do the eyes just like that uh, and then we can choose the eyedropper click on that uh, color and that's an okay color and remember how we uh, we copied uh, that other piece, where we press V for the very beginning. We hold down Alt. There we go, and then we hover over it and we click and we drag. So now we have two. All right, and let's do the eyebrows. Go to our pen tool, click inside of the hat. Alt, click on that guy, go up there, and finish the object off. Let's do our eyedropper, get the color off of that. All right. Now let's go back to our pen tool. And it looks like these guys are the same thing, and we could make them the same thing. It might be a nice little style, because uh, his eyebrow could be the same color as the rest of his body. In fact, let's do that. That might be a nice stylistic thing. Uh, so let's start here by clicking uh, in there, click over here, click over here, Alt, click on this guy. You can see there's probably an anchor right over there. And now we could click over here, but it looks like there may be an anchor right over there. Let's see what happens if we do it all in one shot. may be a little bit different than our uh, original. Now I'm going to move this anchor. I'm not holding down Alt because that's going to make this a hard anchor, uh, but it's going to keep it a soft Bezier anchor. And then I'm just holding down Control to do that. So definitely was an, an extra anchor in there, but we're not going to worry about it. This is our version. Uh, Alt, click on this guy, and you see it's filling over there, but we're going to come around and change it. And I give a little bit of a curve there. Alt click. Alt click. Alt click. Alt click. And then it goes all the way up there. So let's see what happens if we go like this right at the end. Now I'm going to hold down control, bring this down. And hold down uh, Alt on this so that I get two handles. Uh, and then hold down Alt over here. And Control over here. 
All right, so this one, I do kind of want to break this one up. So with this like that, I'm going to actually add an anchor. So I'm still in the tool, uh, and you can see the plus sign is there. I click there, we've added an anchor. And then I'm holding down Control, and I'm moving it out like so. And I alt click on this guy and make it hard. And I click over here. There we go. Now it's starting to look beard like. Uh, alt click on this one. Come in here. Click over there. All right, so what am I going to do? So this shape is going to go over the ear. So I'm just going to keep going along uh, in this uh, on this angle, in this direction. Click there. Alt click. Go inside with that little notch. Click over here. Click where this other notch is. Alt click on here to make it hard. Curve it a little. Alt click curve it a little and I'm going to do this over here and then come inside the hat go over here and finish the tool right there all right so there's the beard looks cute so you can see it's on top of that uh, that mustache but we haven't made the mustache yet Instead, let's save it. Let's make this ear. Just get that out of the way. So for this one, we're going to do pen tool. And we're going to click on this one. And let's click down here. And let's have Illustrator do the curve for us. Uh, and let's see this out and then we'll alt click on this guy and then we'll close it there however I don't like this top curve so I could do a couple things I can hold down alt and pull it over here and that should change things around so did have add a nice anchor over there there and there so it looks like That's all right. It's a little bit different. But let's get a color for his ear. So let's give it kind of this artificial pink uh, that he has. You can do any color you want, obviously. Maybe he's been in the sun just a little bit too much. There we go. Now we're going to make a new one, and this is going to be this inside color uh, for his ear, which is going to be a little darker. Control to move that. Click on this to change it. Click to change. Click to change. going to fold this in a little bit because we can and then we're going to click on this color and make it a little darker so we do brightness darken it All right, so now we want that to be behind this beard. So let's open up our little shape here. And there, there's our beard, there's our, hair, our ear. So I'm gonna click on the ear, target that, move it behind the beard. And there's the inside of the ear. I'm gonna click on that and move that behind the beard. 
And now if we hide our reference layer, we have that little guy behind the beard. Told you that this is going to be a long video. Okay, <clears throat> now let's do uh, let's do the face uh, color. No, we're not going to do the face color because it's going to obfuscate what we have going on on the face. Let's do the nose. Click and hold. I'll try down here. So I'll have Illustrator do some of these curves. No, nope, I don't like that. I'm going to add uh, a, a, a shape there, or an anchor there. There we go. All right, and then I'll go down around over here. So it certainly doesn't hurt to try to do as few um, anchors as possible. Um, if you find that it's it's just not doesn't have the right shape, then definitely add a new one. All right there's our nose. We're gonna give that a bit of a reddish color because he's been out in the sun. Whoa. Sunburned, not three degrees of burn, though. All right. You'll also notice that he has a nice little highlight on his nose. Uh, we can do the same thing like we did with the hat. color to white, change the opacity to give it a nice little highlight, turn off our reference, that's a pretty good uh, thing, but let's give it a little bit more of a highlight, there we go, put our reference back on, okay, save it, let's do this mustache, I used to know somebody with a handlebar mustache, I bought a Takamini guitar from him. I doubt he's watching. Interesting character. Alright, so this is a fun little uh, shape. We'll click on this guy here. You'll get the feeling of where to put your anchors after a while. Oh, control. And you can always change it if you don't like how it's uh, behaving. also works. So I lost the, the anchor, so it's done, uh, but I have to start again. You can see the little slash, uh, so it uh, connected um, once again. And it doesn't matter what I do back here. Remember, I could do whatever I wanted um, because no one's going to see it. So you can't really see what's going on under here, so I'm just going to have to make it up. And there's our shape. That looks a little funky over there. 
Let's see if we can make that look a little less funky. Sometimes some funk is not good. Oops. All right. So there is our mustache. Let's give that mustache a more brown color. So you can switch back and forth between these guys. Uh, hue, saturation, brightness, red, green, and blue. Uh, and that can, um, um, you can change a lot of colors that way. And okay, so we do see this. However, our mustache is in front of our nose. We don't want that to be the case. So target the mustache, put it behind the nose. And now if we hide our reference, there we go. Cool. There is a high, uh, shadow underneath the nose, which we'll add. Now let's add the lips that are behind the mustache. So this should be super easy. Super simple. Just something silly like that. Give it a pinkish color. Might be a jump scare here. My dogs will bark at nothing. All right, and then let's move this behind our mustache. Now let's do a, a shadow underneath the nose. And this shadow could be um, <clears throat> any color because it's going to just uh, be transparent. So we click over here. Oh, it's going up under there. Is it really? Is it really? It's good to doubt. Doubt is an unpleasant condition, but certainty is absurd. There's our nose, there's our shadow. Now let's get this guy and let us change the color. And we're just going to make a shadow color, give it a little bit of uh, color to it. And then we're going to drop the opacity down. So it's just going to have a mild modification to the colors. Mm, I don't know about that, everyone. Let's do that. I like that better. Isn't he cute? All right, so uh, we have that. And uh, let's see. We may just stop after the head, and then, um, and then you can uh, finish the rest of it on your own. Okay, let's do the face. So <clears throat> we have the face <clears throat> and we have this back beard. <clears throat> and then we have this little uh, hippie ponytail. So let us do the face here. We'll start here.
I'm actually going to use that anchor and then I'm going to click on the anchor so it's hard so that it goes behind everything. There we go. And then remember, it doesn't matter what it looks like inside here because we're just doing the face color. So the only thing we really needed was that initial curve. And this color is going to be just kind of a light pink. So we choose the hue that we want, choose the saturation that we want, the brightness. And that's our face color. And we want to put it behind the nose. Um, that's kind of behind everything. Yeah. Ooh. Looks like he's uh, been holding his breath too much. we have that and now all we need to do is his beard which is going to include the ponytail and we're going to start over here we're going to go over here because we want this bottom shape to just kind of come out of the beard and I click on this to make that one hard you can see there's probably an anchor over there and then I'm going to click on that. Oh, no, I'm not. Notice how when you get like this, there's like not much sensitivity under here. Just get that anchor where I want it, and then I'm going to move this one with control. And then zoom in. Go to this little spot. Make that one hard. Zoom out. Grab that one. Click once, move this guy in, click over here, stretch that out, click over here, stretch that out, alt click over here to make that hard, go into the hat, control click to move that in a little, and then control click to make that one hard. And then click over here, bend that one. Oh, we don't need that. That's right. It's going to be inside that shape. So now it just doesn't matter what we're doing because we have that beard color inside. Go and click on that one. All right, so this is the beard color that's a little bit darker than everything. Uh, so let's use our eyedropper uh, to get that color and then let's darken it, brighten it, darken, okay, and take our beard and let's put it behind everything. All right, there's our funny little dude. Now you'll notice there's a couple other little things. There's this little highlight over here, uh, and then there's the little uh, uh, cheek colors. Uh, so before we get to that, let's do his neck over here. So let's get to this. This is going to be behind everything as well. So we'll start over here. Go inside. Doom, 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 doom. Doom. Over there. There we go. Give this a color. It's kind of like his 
face. Maybe we'll give it a little bit of a, a pink color. But we'll uh, darken it a bit. everything and let's do his uh, let's do his collar and then that'll go on top of uh, the rest of the body this is going to go underneath everything I'll click his neck all right there's a couple things I didn't know uh, how that was gonna work uh, when I was doing it and So this is going to go um, underneath the beard, but over the neck. There we go. All right. So that's our guy so far. <clears throat> Let's give us a uh, little cheek um, colors there. Now this one, we could actually do an ellipse. And let's get a color for that. Let's do like a pink color. Very beginning, very beginning, rotate it, and let's select both of these guys, and let's uh, put the opacity down pretty low, about there, select both of these guys, and we're going to put it behind the nose. We want to put it behind the mustache. And I think the only thing left that we have to do in our shading is this uh, color over his head, uh, under his hat. So now this one's an interesting one. Um, it's going to cover a lot. So let's go over here and we're going to have uh, the face cut part of this. Let's go over here. Oh, my little dude is so funny. <laughs> All right, so that is our shadow color. And you're like, hey, what, what's, what, what's up with that weird shape? But we don't really need to care about it too much because we're going to have the face cut it. 
so let's see here. First off for this uh, shape, uh, let's see, we want to, how are we gonna do this? Make sure that all these guys are selected. Let's make it a shadowy color. And let's just select all of these pieces together. So I just did a marquee around all of it and I'm using the shape builder and then I'm holding down alt and I'm gonna take that off and I take that off. And there's our little shadow color. And then we're gonna All right, look at that, isn't that amazing? It looks so pretty. All right, so that is uh, the first part of it. Um, the rest of this is going to be just a cakewalk in comparison. Um, this is the more complex one. You just have to understand which things go on top of which uh, and uh, how you're gonna plan that out. Obviously, like I didn't have everything planned out, but I had kind of an idea of what I was gonna do um, and so the rest of it, just remember, some stuff is going to go over other stuff. Um, you don't want any uh, white space in between it. You just want it nice and crisp and clean. Uh, things like uh, the, the line, this fisherman's line, remember you can use a stroke for that. That's just going to be a single stroke. Um, the stuff for the fish, uh, remember these guys will go behind it. The head will go in front of everything else. Uh, and uh, these layers over here, remember you can reuse anchors, so you can have all this stuff go down to one point, uh, and then the tail can go on top of everything. Uh, and uh, over here, remember you can use the shape builder uh, for under the pants, uh, and you can just cut out uh, those other areas. You don't have to go into too much detail about the shading over here, um, but you should definitely get, you know, some of these nice details like this little uh, doodad. I don't fish, so I don't know what it's called, but uh, that little metal thing, uh, it'd be nice to see that. Uh, and then we can also add a drop shadow behind everything. Uh, but uh, this is the start of it, and I hope it was interesting. Thank you for watching.